Is Grand Seiko just another fancy Seiko, or does it have what it takes to compete with the best of Switzerland? Let's find out today. But first, cherry blossoms. Hey guys, I'm Max and welcome back to Hope Once. So it seems that Grand Seiko has just set the internet on fire over the last year. And I have to say, I haven't been one of the original fanboys. I mean, I love Seiko, but I love Seiko like I love Honda. See, you buy a Civic if you want something cheap, reliable and inconspicuous, but I don't necessarily associate it with luxury or performance. But I guess Honda also made the NSX, so I didn't want to knock it until I tried it. So when a subscriber offered to send his SBGA 413 to me just in time for the spring cherry blossoms here in Seattle, I thought, you know, this would be a good chance for me to spend a couple weeks with the watch and see if it'll change my mind. The SPGA 413 is part of the Four Seasons collection, exclusive to the United States, being the model representing spring. Introduced in 2019, Grand Seiko draws on the brand's strong connection with nature to bring us another amazing textured dial, made to resemble the sakura blossoms in the water onto which they have fallen. The watch case is bold and angular and is constructed of titanium, Though some prefer the heft of steel, at half of its weight I find the titanium more wearable and actually warmer to the touch, and some even claim it to be hypoallergenic. This dial is fascinating as it takes on hues around it, most of the time appearing silver, but when surrounded by these spring cherry blossoms, for example, it takes on a subtle pinkness. The dimensions are highly wrist-friendly, my only complaint being that it has an odd 21mm lug width, as I think it would look great on a calf leather strap. To really appreciate a Grand Seiko, you need a macro lens. Notice the golden logo polished to a mirror finish and subtly raised from the dial for extra dimension. These sharp sword hands are brushed on top and polished on its bevels, appearing like tiny weapons for a miniature samurai. This is a watch that is at once masculine as well as graceful and has a certain balance that displays the thoughtfulness that went into its design. The titanium bracelet is comfortable and the clasp is small and unobtrusive. However, it does use friction pins, making adjustments a chore. Case finishing is of course of the finest, featuring the renowned Zaratsu hand polishing by Master Craftsman. Just a quick pause here to ask you to help out this channel continue to make quality watch videos by doing all those YouTube things like giving this video a thumbs up and also subscribing if you want to stay in the loop for the future. It really helps. Grand Seiko has released a lot of new models recently. In my opinion, it's a little bit much, but when it comes to their movements, they have just three. That's the 9F Quartz, the High Beat, as well as my favorite, which is the Spring Drive. See, the Japanese has always been good at beating the Swiss at their own game, but to me, if you're gonna be the new kid on the luxury block, then you better bring something new to the table. You see, in any mechanical watch, we need a mechanism by which to slowly release the stored energy in the mainspring to prevent it from rapidly unwinding. In other words, a break of some sort. For over 200 years, this has been accomplished by the quite ingenious lever escapement. This mechanism, though, relies on friction and is thus vulnerable to environmental conditions. The culmination of three decades of research at Seiko, Spring Drive uses a frictionless electromagnet to achieve this same action. The force does not come in the form of a battery, rather through a design that would surely make Einstein proud. Through what is called the tri-synchro regulator, mechanical force is siphoned to produce electricity, which vibrates a quartz oscillator. 
the signal from the oscillator is then compared with the rate of rotor spin, and a proportional amount of electromagnetic braking power is applied to this rotor to slow it down such that it exactly matches the frequency of the vibrations from the crystal. Thus, through a completely self-contained system, this mechanical watch is able to have the precision of a quartz movement without the need for a battery. There is no ticking pallet, only a whirling rotor seen spinning from the transparent case back. And of course, we are treated with the mesmerizing smooth sweep of the second hand, something that a Swiss lover can only dream of. Turning the watch over, the quality finishing continues to shine. The engraving is intricate on the movement and every edge is beveled and polished to a mirror finish. I personally think the lion stamp only stands to obscure our view. And if this were my watch, you might catch me on a free afternoon with some rubbing compound. The sapphire crystal is milled in a way that reminds me of vintage acrylic ones standing proud of the case and obviating the need for much of a bezel. In many ways, this Grand Seiko feels like the natural evolution of the mechanical watch. With accuracy within one second per day, you can trust it and no longer have to check your phone to your watch before putting it on. And with a power reserve of three days, you can count on the watch to still be running come Monday morning. Some question the need for a power reserve indicator on an automatic watch. Call me OCD, but I appreciate the knowledge of knowing how much juice is left in the mainspring at any given time. So how do we summarize this Grand Seiko? Its design is somewhat muted and far from in your face. However, it makes up for the lack of flamboyance with thoughtful details, innovative technology, and masterful craftsmanship. In other words, very Japanese. For a dress watch that can take a beating, be light as a feather on the wrist, run for days and be dead accurate, I don't think it has much in the way of competition. So it's been a pleasure spending a couple of weeks with this Grand Seiko. It's not a watch that blows you away out of the box, but as you take more time with it, see it from different lighting conditions, different angles, it wins you over slowly with its high level of craftsmanship. If you also find yourself needing more of a visual pop, take a look at the SBGA 415 or the Winter Edition. That one has a similar dial, but a blued second hand. Anyway, what do you think? Does Grand Seiko belong in the same league as your Rolexes and Omegas? Let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.